What's up guys, Penguin Overlord here, and welcome back to Ghost Recon Breakpoint. In today's video, I'm going to go over my typical um, setup for my assault rifles and why I recommend these specific attachments. So, let's get started. Uh, for this uh, example, I'm going to use the 416, um, just a plain average assault rifle, and this is how I typically set it up. So, I'm going to have the standard magazine, the compensator, the mall DA, the EXP3 and G33 sight, and the underbarrel grenade launcher. Now, let's go over in detail why I set this up this particular way. So, the magazine doesn't really matter to me. 30 rounds is good enough, and that's the default option is in this game, which I am thankful for because in Ghost Recon Wildlands, the default was 20, and that just wasn't enough firepower. So, 30 is good. You could use 50 if you want. I'm not going to stop you, but uh, you do get less reload speed and more vertical recoil so i don't really like using that uh but you could use 50 it's fine uh muzzle devices so we've got some options here so the compensator the flash hider muzzle brake a suppressor here's the thing between these three i don't notice a huge or really with the suppressor too i don't really notice a huge difference in recoil with any of them uh they all seem to be very similar to me at least in performance wise so just kind of go if you want i do think the compensator is the best overall one because you do get a little bit less vertical recoil and a uh, less shot spread the flash hiders gives you a lot of shot spread but i don't really use it because of another attachment that i use which gives me um less shot spread as well so i think it's a little bit superfluous to have this the muzzle brake, I don't think it really does anything for you with hip fire recoil because I never use hip fire. Like, I'm always um, a doing ADS wherever I'm aiming down the sight or in third person. I'm still aiming with this, so I typically don't use the muzzle brake. It would be useful if the injury system happened more often, uh, where I think there's an injury level where um, if you get badly hurt enough, you can't actually aim anymore. That would be useful, but if you're, but with the injury system being so nerfed in this game and basically useless, um, there's no real point to using the muzzle brake. However, there is a point to using a suppressor in this game because the enemy detection system is very much different from Wildlands. In Wildlands, if you got alerted and just, you shot someone, basically everyone in the base would know exactly your location and everyone would start charging at you. This is not the case in Breakpoint unless you really screw up stealth, like if you're firing unsuppressed or if you're just shooting into a crowd of people, then yeah, people are going to figure out where you are. But for the most part, um, unless they see you, they don't really know where you are. So you can't, there actually is, um, you, assault rifles are actually viable for stealth if you're using a suppressor. So it is fairly it is much more effective than it was at Ghost Recon Wildlands. So for guns like the 416 Shorty, I'll typically run that with a suppressor. Um, it's just it's more it's a lot more effective, and I could probably talk about that in a different video. But trust me on this: um, don't overlook the suppressor in this game. You don't have to have it, but it is nice to have, and it does actually do a decent job at suppressing noise and keeping enemies from figuring out your posi exact position. Now, next up, I typically use the Maul DA. I think this is the best overall attachment for assault rifles. There is another good one, but I think this is the best overall. It does give you more range. Now, I am running, generally speaking, on all of my um, character builds, Ballistic Advantage, uh, which gives you a lot of extra range and handling. So, that may not necessarily be um, completely necessary, but it is nice to have a little bit of extra range on your assault rifle that keeps the bullet drop significantly less and in combination with the mall and ballistic advantage i basically have very minimal bullet drop at 200 meters which is nice uh my 10 percent sway not a huge deal but it is going to counteract another attachment that i have um that gives me extra sway so that's nice and 20 percent shot spread so this is pretty good i like using this on assault rifles um there is another good attachment though which is the at PL times three now this one will give you minus 10% horizontal recoil, minus 7% time to aim, and minus 10% shot spread. So this isn't too bad either, and you shouldn't overlook it, because a lot of the attachments in this game don't do anything for horizontal recoil, and a lot of them make it worse, which is really unfortunate, because um, horizontal recoil is harder to compensate for than vertical recoil in general. 
Um, so I wouldn't necessarily overlook this one either, the ad peel times three. And in fact, on some rifles, you can't actually use them all because, uh, at least on this 416 Assault Special, if I can actually move it around, um, it doesn't have a top Picatinny rail, which the mall requires in order for you to use it properly. So you're kind of stuck with uh, the Appeal, the Peck 15, or the Rangefinder. And we will talk about those in a second. But yeah, don't overlook the Appeal Times 3. It's actually pretty good. Now, the Peck 15 is not very useful in my opinion. You get 30% hip fire recoil, which again, if you're badly injured enough um, where you can't aim anymore, then yeah, this would be useful. But um, generally, I haven't found it to be any benefit to me. Uh, the extra hip fire recoil reduction is not worth missing out on the bonuses for these other two attachments. And it's basically only really good for if you want to have a top mounted pick 15 on your gun because you want to cosplay as a special operations soldier. If, which if you want to do that, that's totally fine. That's completely up to you. But I just don't find this particularly useful. It's cool looking, but that's about it for me. Now the range finder. Basically, never, ever, ever use the rangefinder for anything for any reason, because um, it gives you it only gives you fifty percent range, which that's the exact exact same amount of range that the mall gives you. Um, so that's pointless, and you get extra time to aim, which is not useful for an assault rifle or really a DMR. But I'll talk about that in a different video. Um, just suffice to say, just never use the rangefinder. It's not worth it at all. Now, going up to sights, this is kind of going to be kind of a personal preference thing. You can kind of use whatever you want. I don't really care. I do like having a variable power sight, though. Uh, so that's why I'm going with the EXP3 and G33 sight, because that's generally the only one that's available on assault rifles. Um, if the assault rifle in question has it at all, like there's some, like I believe the Bren 805, which doesn't have variable magnification at all, so you're kind of stuck there, which... Again, another downside of Ghost Recon Breakpoints, uh, Gunsmith system, at least currently, some attachments are arbitrarily um, restricted from certain guns, which makes no sense, but whatever. Uh, I'm not using the digital sight. I love this uh, optic in Ghost Recon Wildlands because it gave you a variable power magnification, but that is not the case in Breakpoint. It gives you a fixed 2.5 power um, for no reason at all, which makes zero sense because, um, in real life, this optic is a one to four power optic. So, um, not sure why Ubisoft made that change from Ghost Recon Wildlands to Breakpoint. It doesn't make any sense at all. It would have been just easy to port over the regular digital scope to Breakpoint, but whatever. I don't understand their decisions. Um... So yeah, I'll typically use this sight, even though it is harder to hit helicopters with the grenade launcher, which we're going to talk about next, the grenade launcher. So 15% sway, not a big deal because the mall um, decreases the amount of sway on the gun, and this is an assault rifle, so sway isn't really that big of a deal. Um, and I'm only getting 5%, so it's not that bad of a trade-off uh, for having um, grenades that you can fire out of your gun. Now, the grenade launcher in this game is not as useful it was, as it was in uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands for a couple of reasons. One, it seems to be a little bit more finicky in this game. Like, sometimes I'll blow up a vehicle, and sometimes I'll hit the vehicle with the grenade launcher, but it'll just kill the enemies inside and not actually blow up the vehicle. So, I don't know what's going on with that. It's much less powerful, and it's not as useful as against as um, I thought it would be against the ground drones, um, the Amons, the Ams, whatever. Um, they don't do as much damage as I th hoped they would and thought they would. So that's kind of unfortunate. And good luck hitting a flying drone with the grenade launcher. Just <laughs> good luck. It's not going to be fun. Also, the uh, enemy helicopters in this game are smaller and faster than the ones in uh, Wildlands. They are using the Overseer, Little Bird sort of style of helicopter so they they move around fast and it's harder to connect with um the grenade launcher um with those it could also be a sight issue because i do find the digital sight in wildlands uh work together with the grenade launcher because you could compensate um you could basically range out the grenade launcher and i found it harder with this site in wildlands so that could be an issue as well um but if you do get a hit it will blow up the helicopter so um 
in general, I think this is the best attachment. It, even though it's not as good as it was in Wildlands, it's still pretty effective against in certain situations. So I really do like having it. Now, this is a, these um, weapon setup videos are going to be really hard for me to do because um, some attachments are arbitrarily restricted off of certain guns. So it's going to be hard for me to say that, oh, X attachment is the best for submachine guns or assault rifles or whatever because, um, well, in this case, I have three vertical foregrips um, available to it and no angled grips. Uh, the 416 Shorty, for example, has the rounded angled foregrip, which is goofy as hell, but it, at least it does good stuff besides vertical recoil. Um... But I can't put it on my 416 for some reason. Again, another flaw of the gunsmith system, as it currently stands in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. There's no reason for random attachments to be arbitrarily restricted to certain guns and not available on others. So that's kind of unfortunate. So out of these three for the 416, uh, if you're not going to use a grenade launcher, I typically use the, either the lightweight vertical foregrip or the shift vertical foregrip. Um... There are, let's see, the shift gives you minus 7% vertical recoil, but no trade-off, so that's not terrible. But um, the lightweight vertical foregrip um, gives you minus 10% vertical recoil and gives you 10% uh, speed while aiming, which is nice. The trade-off, of course, though, is that it will slow down your reload and give you more horizontal horizontal recoil. Excuse me. So that's kind of a bummer, So, um, but it, it's a decent trade-off, unlike this vertical grip. This basically, it really reduces your vertical recoil, which is not a huge deal because you can usually compensate for that. But you get 15% horizontal recoil, 15% less reload speed, and more shot spread. This is not worth it. I, I mean, I get that the Magpul grip looks cool, but as far as bonuses go, I never use this. I think this is just bad, so I'll never use this ever for any reason. So yeah, it's the grenade launcher for me when I'm running an assault rifle, because that basically keeps the recoil fairly steady. Let me just go shoot it off real quick. So, I mean, you'll it'll start to veer off a little bit towards the end, but if you're firing in small bursts, um, yeah, it'll just, it'll keep it in a tight pattern, so it won't veer off unexpectedly as much. So yeah, there you go. That's my general purpose um, assault rifle setup. That's why I typically run on my on most of my assault rifles. There are a few exceptions, which I'll cover in future videos, but that's generally what I like using on my assault rifle and what I think is the best overall, overall um, attachment set for it. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these. I do plan to make a few more um, general overview setup weapon of um weapon setups in this game so let me know if you like to see more of that uh leave a comment subscribe all that good stuff uh if you enjoyed my content anyway i'm penguin overlord hope you all found this video helpful and i will catch you all next time take care guys